the second technique that we're going to talk about is going to be evaporation to dryness. Okay, evaporation to dryness here. It's a technique used to separate solute from a solvent in a solution. So as I stated at the start, a solution is made up of a solvent and a solute. A solute are the dissolved solid particles, and a solvent is the liquid which the solid dissolves in. So the diagram here actually shows it quite nicely that in your solution, you have tiny particles, which most of the time you can't really see it, which are called a solute, and the liquid is the, known as the solvent. So in actual fact, if you talk about solid and liquid, what method can we use? We can actually use filtration. However, we cannot use filtration here because the solute particles are too small. So this method is out. We cannot use filtration. Cancel, cancel. So now, okay, as you can see here, I stated here, the solute particles are too small to be sieved away by the filter paper. So the technique we're going to use evaporation to dryness is the key. So how do we do it? Okay, now, what we're going to do is just to get rid of all the solvent. Okay, we're just going to get rid of the solvent. And what we're going to left is the solute, which is the solid particles. And most of the time, the solvent which we're removing is water, which has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. Right, boiling point 100 degrees Celsius. So this is a very simple method. Okay, simple method. Now, how do we go about doing it? So do take note, you need to copy the diagram here. Right, first up, we're going to transfer the solution into an evaporating dish. So now it's going to look like in your beaker, you have a solution. Okay. You have to transfer it into an evaporating dish. That is still your solution. Okay, but now this oval thing over here, okay, this semicircle thing, is that's your evaporating dish. So let me label my diagrams carefully. So this is a beaker. This is an evaporating dish. After that, in step two, what do you do? Okay, sorry, let me go back up again. Okay, you put the evaporating dish over a Bunsen burner to heat up the solution. Okay, you put it out over a Bunsen burner. So evaporating dish with the solution. Okay, we heat it up using our Bunsen burner. Ready for gas hole flame. Okay, so we're gonna heat it up. To allow the solvent to boil. So during this process, what you're gonna have is you're gonna see that the water level is actually dropping. Right, as you heat it up. Okay, a symbol for heating up is also a triangle. So take note this also means heating up. Heated. Right, this means heated up as well. Right? So you can see that the water level here has decreased from this mark over here. You can see this is the original market. Now it has gone down. And at this point here, actually, you'll start to see solid particles forming in the bottom. And as the process goes on, then you have even lesser water, even more solids present. Same thing is still being heated up. Right? So during this process, you'll start to see that the solids will form up here at the base and at the side. Now, what I did not include here was the solids at the side. Okay. You can try heating up your salt solution at home. Or you take water, take your salt, dissolve in water, mm -hmm. and you can heat it up in your pot. And you realize that actually the salt will start forming quite instantaneously. Okay, now once all the solvent is boiled away, so at the end, what you're gonna have left with, if this is your evaporating dish, you have no more solvent, or no more solvent, and what you're left is your solute. And your solute will be stuck all over the place. So this red color marking here is actually my solute. In this case here, I cannot really call it solute anymore. Because there's no more, it's not a solution, it's not a solvent. So the name has changed. Now it's going to be my solid tin. Okay. 
So just take note, by using evaporation dryness, what you're going to have is you're going to get a solid. All the liquid is boiled away. You have none of the liquid left. So the good thing about evaporation dryness is that it is fast, it is easy to execute. However, the downside of it is that many substances decomposes. So if you want to get a certain salt, it might split up to become other compounds, other substances, and I will not get what I wanted at the start. So this is the issue here. They will decompose when they are heated strongly. Now you can see the Bunsen burner here. If the timing is not right, okay, when there's no more solvent left and you forgot to turn the heat off, you're going to cause your salt to decompose. Okay, now, the other thing is this. In addition, impurities may also be left with the crystals. Okay, so, for example, if your solution is not pure, you've got your liquid with maybe two other sol solutes inside there, you're going to have a mixture again, but there's a mixture of two different, two different solids. So there's the issue here with regards to evaporation and dryness. So this is good because it is fast, it is easy. However, this is not the preferred choice for many chemists, okay? Because there are many downsides to it. In actual fact, two downsides to be exact. One and two. Okay, so the next method that we're going to talk about is the most preferred choice, which you're going to write down most of the time in your chemistry answer. That's the end of part two.